Guys, Shardmas Prime here doing another Mezco Toys 112 Collective Action figure review on the second Mezco Toys 112 Collective Amazing Spider Man. And I gotta say, I'm pretty excited for this one. And I do like the packaging design for this as well. Very Steve Ditko inspired for sure. And we get all these Ditko panels throughout over here looking pretty damn sweet. It says 112. Pose play display on the back. You can see the spot varnished Spider Man. Once again, you get some vulture right there. And then on this side, you can see the spider logo, Amazing Spider Man. This is all spot varnished. It says the Amazing Spider Man up top. I love how these just weave in and out on every side of the packaging. It's actually really, really fun. And then on the very bottom, you can see some nice looking imagery of Spider Man right over there. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And if you're trying to get your Mezco toys, you can do so. It be. Big, big, get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. <laughs> and here's the new Mesco Spider-Man out of the packaging. And this thing's actually a lot of fun. There are some restrictions due to the nature of Mesco going with the soft goods and Spider-Man being, you know, super poseable and everything. So, yeah, you'll run into restrictions and everything. Uh, but I've had a really fun time with this figure so far, and there are a ton of accessories. There are many, many accessories to go over. So, yeah, let's get a close look at those, and then we'll get a closer look at the figure. Go ahead and start with the base and this mat right over here. You get this Mezco-style Amazing Spider-Man, and you can feel the texturing on that right there. And you get your Mezco stand, which we've seen a million times before. We also have this attachment right over here for the Spidey Sense, which I think looks very cool. I really do like it a lot. Now, there were moments where I just decided to use some sticky tack. It's the same thing that they'd used for the Daredevil radar. And then you also get this mat right over here, which you could also use as the spider light. But, you know, I just had Spider-Man standing on it and you could feel all the webs and everything. It's pretty cool. I, I do like this. I don't think it's magnetic, though. No, it's not magnetic. And then we have all of these web accessories. Holy crap, there's a lot of web accessories over here. I wish we got one more small whipping web accessory, though. And I do love what Mezco does with their webbing. Like, it has this really nice pearlescent look to it. And I think it looks very, very cool. So I am happy with the aesthetic of the webbing. Uh, there's this bendy wire webbing right over here. Unfortunately, some of that pearlescent paint kind of peels off here and there as you bend it around. So yeah, be mindful of that. But I still am happy to have this. I do like it. Uh, we have this kind of uh, lasso webbing that I wrapped around Morbius. And it's okay. You know, you could attach it to the thwipping hands, which we'll show off in a moment. And you also get this web backpack right here, which does look very cool. That pearlescent paint is just so badass on these. I really do like that a lot. And then you also get a web shield over here, which also looks great. I really like that. And then you get this face web, so you can get web on the face. I'm not putting this on a Mezco figure. I don't want to scratch anything, but, you know, you could put it on an animated Green Goblin Marvel Legends figure right there. That looks very cool. I do like that. And then you have your uh, web line that you could swing from, and this goes into one of the web-grabbing hands, so that works out pretty well. Easy to use. And then you can see we get this right here, which you could use as a catapult web, or you could go ahead and use it for this web parachute, which is what it's really intended for. You could also use this as a hammock. I saw somebody do that. I forgot who, but I thought that was a very clever idea. And then you can see the inside right here. And you just want to hook this in right there and right there. And then hook in on the other side right here and right here. And then now you have your web parachute. And yeah, that, that's a pretty cool accessory, especially because it's one of the, you know, constructs from his webs that he uses way, way back in the day. And with this being a Steve Ditko inspired figure, I think that's very appropriate. Then we get to these nine sets of interchangeable hands. We get a newspaper and we get spider bots and a camera, which is actually really cool with all these details in here. Very realistic. Ooh, all these details in here. It looks very realistic. I really like the paint a lot. So that's pretty awesome. And it comes with two different straps for it right here. Uh, this one's just for displaying. And then this one you could actually put around Peter's neck if you want to. And they just clip on to the sides right there. Very easy to do. It does 
does come with an ultimate nullifier. I think that's what this is. It's the ultimate nullifier, right? Oh, man. And I want to get the Fantastic Four set, you know, so eventually I'll be able to pick that up, but just not right now at the moment. And then you get this newspaper right here, which looks really good. I love how you can see all that print in there. So that's pretty awesome. It doesn't open up, but yeah, you get print deco right there on the back as well as the front of it uh, you get oops, i just dropped some but you get six spider bots right over here or spider tracers i think they're actually spider tracers and i think they look very cool nice gunmetal gray they're all identical to each other but yeah you get six of them in case you lose any or you just want to put all six in a display and then these hands are pretty badass so you get Big grabbing hands right big grabbing hands right over here. You have these relaxed hands, which look pretty cool. Uh, you have wide open hands, and then you get these grabby hands that kind of have a tighter grip. And then you get these tightest gripping hands right here, which I use for grabbing the web line. So you get that little piece right there inside where you could go ahead and weave this through. And as you would assume, it's very easy to do to get him holding this. So that's pretty cool. I do like that. And then you also have wall crawling hands right over here. And then you get your flippers, which again, you have the same uh, whole system for the webbing where you just put the loop into the hand right here and you let that little notch have the webbing go through, and then you port it onto the figure like that. And then he comes with two right hands. One of them is pointing, and the other one is thumbs up. And then lastly, the figure comes with five different heads, and then you get the set of glasses, and then the unmasked mask right here, which looks really good with all the ring, which looks... <sighs> Which looks really good with all the wrinkles in here. I do like the details. You don't have any paint or any cobweb pattern painted on the inside of it, but ah, that's fine. Worked out okay. Then you get the Peter head sculpt, which I don't know, for whatever reason, biggest fan of it. I don't know why Peter has green eyes right there. It's either blue or brown, but I guess if the comics are inconsistent, why not have the figures be inconsistent? The hair looks okay. I don't know. I, I feel like he's almost got like these little Doctor Strange points on the sides right here a little bit. But it looks all right. You know, it's not a bad Peter head sculpt by any means. Uh, I think these glasses are mostly just for having him hold them and displaying them. More so than having, you know, the figure actually wear them. But you can have him wear them. You know, it just doesn't line up perfectly or it's a little tricky to get it set up, you know, so that... He's looking right through those, but, you know, you don't really want him displayed with that on there, do you? I had to use some sticky tack to get these to stay, but you can see we have that spider sense or the 50-50 head sculpt right over here, and I think this looks really cool. I really like this head sculpt a lot. And then you have your Steve Ditko-inspired head, which is my favorite of the head sculpts. I really like this one, especially because that was the intention, you know. This is all Ditko all over it. Uh, then we get these two wide open heads. So uh, this one is just the regular one or wide open eye heads and it looks really, really good. But we also get a light up feature one. And I guess the eyes are sculpted differently, but unfortunately the paint did come out a little bit weird on this head for me. So yeah, the eyes aren't supposed to be exactly the same. I guess I thought they were, but nope. And you can see like the lens just doesn't have the accurate paint apps that I was kind of hoping to see. Like the eyes are not really identical to each other. <laughs> you can see there's less black at the bottom than you see on there. You can see some red, you can see that red seeping through. So this is just not painted too well. And then some of the cobweb pattern just doesn't line up properly on the front of the mask and that bums me out. And it does have this whole light up feature. It does come with the two little batteries. I did have to heat this up to be able to pull this off. It's tricky to do. The directions are pretty good at telling you how to do this, but it was still tricky. You kind of want to grab the ball joint right there and kind of wiggle that out, and then you pick this piece right over here, then the whole thing comes out, and oh man, it's still kind of scary to do. It's cold in the garage, so <laughs> this sucks. Oh, jeez, that was, a, yeah, not fun. Uh, it's cold as hell, and peeling that off is just not easy to do, but yeah, you can see those two batteries are just chilling right inside there, so I had to demonstrate that. It's actually a pretty cool looking light up feature. It does look cool when you get it working. It's just getting those batteries in there and putting this back together and taking it apart is just not fun. I definitely have had worse. Oh man, I have to touch this up later. Anyway, you do have that little button on the inside right there and the figure does come with this very convenient tool. I do like it and you can just switch this lever right here and you can see 
The eyes do light up. Well, you can't really see too well that the eyes light up, but, but if I shut these off, yeah, that looks pretty neat. And I was able to take some photos of it. It did look pretty cool, but I don't know. Just because the paint apps don't look so great on the front of it, it's just not worth swapping it out, man. I don't know. <laughs> So unfortunately, the head is very loose, like this head in particular, not the other ones, but this got loose super fast, and I do feel like the spidey heads are all a little bit large in proportion to the rest of the body, and I feel like they're kind of going with this whole thing where they want him to look younger by giving him a bigger head. I guess they wanted him to look like a 15-year-old and gave him a bigger head, even though Steve Ditko didn't really draw Spidey with you know, an out-of-proportion head, kind of look more in proportion to the rest of his body. But, you know, I I'm telling myself, is this cognitive dissonance where I'm just telling myself it's okay because it's supposed to be a teenager head? So I guess that's what that is. You can see the wrinkles right over here. Uh, the shoulders, yeah, you're going to get some wrinkles and fading going on over here with all the posing. I got this guy into a whole ton of poses before shooting this segment. You can see how that gets wrinkled up over there. I do love the Spider logo, and I love how this came out. I don't mind that they didn't go with the darker blue. I, I actually like the lighter blue for Spider-Man overall. And the fact that they're kind of making it different and not 100% Ditko, it's something I do like that Mezco does. Spider logo looks great on the back right there. You can see the stitching. It's, I mean, it doesn't look good, but I don't think it's the worst thing ever, to be honest with you. It didn't really take away uh, from the fun factor at all, seeing the stitching right over there. And then you can see this mater the vinyl material on the front looks pretty good. You have plastic right over here on the forearms. And then you can see the legs. You know, as I heard people complain about this getting bunched up and looking really bad. To me, it actually never really bothered me posing them around. I, I didn't think this looked too baggy or anything. I appreciate having the articulation, man. I really like it. So the boots look really good over here. I do like them. And the feet look pretty good as well. I wish we had toe articulation. We'll get into articulation in just a second. And you can see he has peg holes at the bottom of the feet. So even though this head got super loose on me really quick, I do like the articulation on this figure with the head joint and neck you can get him to look all the way up which is awesome and he can look down very far you get side to side motion and you get great head pivoting no butterfly joints doesn't feel like we have any butterfly joints in there you can get the shoulders to move outward again i recommend not leaving him posed like that for long periods of time you could rotate forward rotate back you get a bicep swivel in there you get the double jointed elbows and then you get the pinned ball joint right here where you can move sideways or vertically depending on how you have it configured you have the diaphragm cut right here a little bit of diaphragm pivoting with both waist and diaphragm joints he'll move forward only that far and back a little bit more so and he'll pivot side to side and of course uh, you could rotate side to side a bit in there then you have the hip joints that move out very far and i could see that bunching up over here but it doesn't really bother me much and you can get him kicking at least 90 degrees up i feel like i was able to get him to kick a little further if i had his leg outward and then you can move back a bit upper thigh cut right over here and so far this hasn't gotten loose on me uh, my first spider-man figure from esco that has gotten very loose at the hips uh, you get the double jointed knees right there you also get boot rotation which helps with the bad ankle pivot i wish the ankles could move down uh, they, they do move up it moves down just a little bit, rotates side to side at the ankle as well. And you do have a weak ankle pivot in there. It's just not the best, but having the rotation at the boot does help with that. It's just, I really wish Mezco would upgrade their ankle pivots. It's just consistently weak. Now to measure out this Spider-Man, you can see that he is standing just a little over six inches tall. And then for a Mezco Spider-Man figure comparison, you can see we have our Mezco Homecoming Spider-Man. And then here's the first comic version that we've gotten from Mezco. And wow, what a huge improvement this one is compared to to that one right over there the, the proportions here are all a little bit weird sometimes i feel like the arms are a little on the short side with this figure i did not mention that earlier i feel like it could come down just a little bit these arms seem a little extra long but these seem a little on the short side. I don't know. And then to bring out a couple other Mesco figures, you can see the recently reviewed Morbius right over here. And we have Doctor Strange, which is one of my favorite Mesco figures. Oh man, seeing these two side by side like this with these very Ditko inspired designs. Oh, this is so cool. This loose head. I gotta put sticky tack in there or something. Damn it. Daredevil. And we have the latest Tiger Stripe Wolverine figure. And these don't scale properly. I wish he was a little bit taller. Seeing Wolverine stand just a hair taller 
taller than Spider-Man irks me, to be honest with you. So yeah, he should have been just a little bit taller. I don't mind him being shorter than Daredevil, but not shorter than Wolverine. And here's our Steve Ditko-inspired Mezco Spider-Man next to the Steve Ditko-inspired, not quite first appearance Spider-Man from Marvel Legends. I still haven't gotten that newer version with the blue on the back. I think they made that because I mentioned this, but it just could be my ego instead. Who knows? Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do a head swap over here if that's even possible. And it's not because the ball pegs stay right there. So uh, let's just see how this would fit sitting on top. Whoa. Hey, that doesn't look... Oh, yeah, it looks too small. Yeah, it kind of looks like a pinhead a little bit. Yeah, that head sculpt is not... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just not feeling that. So it's, uh, I don't know. The verdict is still out on this. What do you guys say? Let me know in the comment section below. I, I'm actually kind of preferring the other head sculpt, but that doesn't look terrible. Like, if this came with this head sculpt on here, I would probably think it's a little on the small side. I'm not sure. I like how I could just rest it on there without any sticky tack or anything. That's kind of neat. And then here's the new Mezco Spider-Man next to your average 6-inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Hey there, little brother. Hey, brother. Oh, you must be nice and cozy in that onesie of yours, huh? Oh, that's such nice looking pajamas you got there. Aren't you gonna stay nice and warm? Then you're gonna stay nice and warm and cozy. Aren't you gonna ah! So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button and please hit that subscribe button for more videos coming your way. And I genuinely hope the video was helpful in your purchase making decision. I hope all the videos are helpful in helping you guys making your purchase decisions because these figures are not cheap, man. Everything's getting more expensive and this figure is not cheap by any means at all whatsoever. But for all the accessories that you're getting over here, it's actually pretty impressive. I gotta say, I do feel satisfied with the purchase. There's a lot of fun to be had with this figure and if I'm able to pick up a Spider-Man figure, which I have so many freaking Spider-Mans in my collection, if I'm able to get a new one and do new things with it or have new accessories or enjoy the character in action figure form that in ways I've never experienced before, well, that makes me happy, man. And this figure has won me over. I really do like it a lot. I have my nitpick gripes about it, and we'll see how the vinyl sections of the suit last, especially in the shoulders with all those wrinkles and stuff, so I'm curious to see how that lasts over time. Uh, the Daredevil figure is actually held up pretty nicely, and that figure I've had for quite a long time already, so hopefully this Spider-Man holds up. I gotta say, man, I really enjoyed this gripes and all at the price point of around what 125 bucks something like that oh man not cheap at all whatsoever i'm going to give this mezco 112 collective classic spider-man a sun rating of i love it and i'd like to know what you guys think i wish i could give it an even higher rating but you know due to the qc issues on that light up head that's probably the biggest disappointment for me with this figure. But yeah, I definitely want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see the latest Marvel news, you can find it all over at MarvelousNews.com. And if you want to stay in touch with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and on whatnot. And I will catch you guys later. Peace. That's crispy. Hey, I'm sure I Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.